again. Welcome to KZQ TV, Channel 32. I'm Henry T. And the name of this program is Be Inspired with Henry T. They do the inspiring. I get inspired. I run in shape. I go for a quick four mile run all after all the guests are here. Today I plan to run six miles because my longtime inspiring friend, Bob Brown, longtime TV fella, uh, associate of mine, and now we work together in radio. Man, he's Mr. Sports Guy and the reigning two years in a row, or is it three, Sports Caster of the Year. Bob Brown, thank you for thank being with you, me Thank you, Henry. Today. I'm inspired to be here, man. It's good to be with you. <laughs> wow, where does this all begin with you? You were born and raised in San Diego. From there, you went all over the world. And wow, you're just the fun factor of our business. We look to you for saying, hey, that business is a good time. If you don't believe me, just watch yeah. Bob Brown. Where did you grow up? Well, I, I was a military brat, so I lived all over. But I really grew up in San Diego, and then I left there. I went to high school in Northern Virginia, right outside of D.C., and, and then went to college in L.A., Lower Alabama. Wow. Troy State University. But I, growing up, I lived overseas in Europe for a while and just traveled a lot. My parents liked to travel, so that was always good. I enjoy going, you know, vacations and going places. But I've been here for 25 years, Henry. My 25 goodness. years. So and this is the place that I've spent the most time, you know, in my life. You and I competed against one another in television. We had some bouts, you know, nice bouts, if you will, uh, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway a yeah. few moons back. Yep. I've always enjoyed your work. You're the consummate professional, and boy, nobody enjoys the work more than you. Congratulations on your career. No, I appreciate that, Henry. I, hopefully, I got many more years ahead of me, though. You know, yeah. but uh, I always, I always wanted to have fun. I mean, I looked at broadcasting. I wanted to, I wanted to get into broadcasting. I never really wanted to be in front of the television camera. It ended up being that way. Uh, well, I went to school at Troy. I played baseball down there. I was a, ba a baseball player, so I got a, a, a scholarship and played a little baseball for a couple of years. And then I decided, well, maybe they decided for me. I wasn't going to be a professional baseball player. <laughs> it was kind of in my, in my genes, if you will, because my grandfather played professional baseball. Played for 10 years in the big leagues. He played with the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates. He won a World Series with the Reds in 1941. So he taught me how to throw wow. a curveball in early age so I could pitch in high school. Got to college. I was an infielder. But you know, I just, I just, I just knew from maybe once I got to college that I wasn't going to be a pro, and I just didn't have that dedication or that drive, you know, to continue that. So it really worked out well because two years into college, uh, I decided, okay, I'd kind of had enough with the baseball thing; it really wasn't working. At that same time, the television station on campus, where they did a local newscast every day, offered me a job there, wow. you know, part time, which basically was the same I was getting paid as you know, baseball scholarship. So it was perfect timing where I got out of baseball, got into broadcasting, and I, I had a degree in broadcast journalism, so that's what I was doing. And I got out in four years, got a job at a TV station, and then you know one thing led to another, working my way up. I was behind the scenes as a camera guy, editor, producer, all those mm -hmm. things. Did a little bit of on work, on camera work. And then in 1990, my wife, my girlfriend at the time, we decided we're gonna move to Albuquerque. We just literally, we wanted to get out of the South. We were living in Georgia at the time. And we literally pulled up in an atlas, Henry, and just basically put our finger down. <laughs> and it was Albuquerque. And I thought, well, that seems like a pretty cool place because growing up in California, I got relatives out there. I got some relatives in the South, the East Coast. So this is kind of an in-between spot where those relatives in California can come and visit, but they can't drop by on the spur of the moment, you know? <laughs> So we moved out to Albuquerque, but before I moved there, I, I called Channel 7 because I was working at an ABC station in Georgia. And I called Channel 7 up and I said, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a job. I'm moving to Albuquerque. You got anything? They said, no, we don't have anything. And I said, well, okay, I'll send you a tape, resume tape, which shows my editing and camera skills and that sort of thing. And I said, well, I'm coming. So whether you hire me or not, I'm coming. We would already decided we were going to come. We're just moving because we're tired of living in the South, wanted to get out of there and head west. So we're preparing to move, and I get a phone call from Mary Lynn Roper. Wow. Basically Channel 7 saying, hey, we got an opening, you know, if you're interested. I said, yeah, I told you I was coming anyway, so I'm moving like in a month. I'll be there. We'll pay your moving expenses for you. My goodness. So I was like, that's cool. 
So I arrive in Albuquerque. I got a job as a cameraman for the news. I was working the night shift, you know, basically two o'clock till 10 and, you know, going out and covering all those things. Well, about three months into it, they fired their third string sports guy, Tony Russell, guy you know, right? And, uh, and I went to Maryland and I said, I used to do a little sports in Georgia. You know, I got a little in front of the camera. I've got uh, some stuff. And she said, well, give me a tape. So I put together a little resume tape for, you know, talent wise. And uh, she got the tape and she said, okay, you're anchoring this weekend. And I was like, what? I, I don't really don't want to be in front of the camera. Really what I wanted to do is just kind of help out the sports guys and do some sports because that's what my background was. You're anchoring this weekend. So I go in there and I anchor the sports which I hadn't done in a few years because I'd been production and producing and behind the scenes thing with the, the news I was working on in Georgia. And they came to me and said, how would you like to sign a three-year contract to be the third sports guy? And wow. I was like, I got to be honest with you, Henry. Not only was it the three-year contract and you know extra money because you're, now you're on, on TV and not behind the scenes, you know, your talent. But the best part about it was I didn't have to be on call. I didn't have to drive the big you know microwave truck around and be out at the crack of dawn and late at night covering these murders or car crashes or whatever it was. I was like, sounds good to me. So I signed a three-year contract. I was the third guy. And then basically that meant shooting the camera, editing, filling in on weekends, filling in on weekdays, traveling a lot as a one-man band because I could do it all. They say, well, we're not going to send two people. We're sending one person. So These for are the years, kinds of yeah. interviews that I like. Well, so for years I covered, you know, a lot of the WAC tournaments by myself. Yeah. Uh, went to Canada with the Dukes baseball team by myself. Uh-huh. You know, what it was like to be a, a minor league baseball player on a road trip. That was kind of the gist of it. So it ended up where they were sending me to NCAA tournaments, you know, conference tournaments, trips where they saved money by sending one person. A lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then I, you know, moved up, did the weekends for a while, and then became the main guy, the sports director for about 10 years. And there just came a time where I was 25 years of television, man. I was like, I got to do something different. And I got out of TV, and basically the day I I got out of Channel 7, left Channel 7, I get a phone call from Joe O'Neill at ESPN Radio. He says, how would you like to do an afternoon sports talk radio show? And I'm like... Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> sure. You know, it's a, it's a lot different than TV, but I was like, uh, sounds cool to me. I don't really have anything else going. So, and it's the studio's near my house. So, <laughs> shut down on the drive time, you know? My goodness. Yeah. People love your show. You've been voted Sportscaster of the Year. You had a tremendous following. I mean, inundated calls every day. What a flattering place to be when people tell yeah. you they enjoy your show. When all those lights light up. Yeah, it's, it's, What's pretty, that like? it's pretty cool because what I feel like is because of all 18 years at Channel 7, people saw me on TV and they may have grown up watching Channel 7 or, or they, they thought it, you know, I went to UNM or I was in commercials or whatever it may be. So they may recognize the face or they may recognize the voice. And because I was on TV for, for so long at Channel 7, because people don't really last that long at a TV station typically. You're kind of moving around and everything. So a lot of these people who kind of grew up, you know, seeing me on television, I think they feel like they somewhat know me. Now they can actually call me and we can talk about sports, you know. And in TV, as you know, it's three minutes, three and a half minutes of here's what I'm telling you. This is all I need to worry about is what I'm telling you. But in this, you know, with, with the radio... They're calling me, asking me about all kinds of different things. So you really need to prepare, and you, you need to know a lot more than just three and a half minutes of what I'm going to tell you. But it's really cool because I get to carry on conversations with people and talk sports and, you know, let those people that, you know, want to have a, a say and a voice in the sports world, they got somewhere to call and talk about it. In our final minute, what do you want people to know about you? Sell your show <laughs> and tell them about something about Bob Brown. I mean, people wow. feel so comfortable with you. And I just want them to really know you today <laughs> with a little extra about Bob Brown that they did not know I don't before. know about that. I don't know what I could tell you, Henry. You know, with the radio show, it is what it is. I mean, it's basically, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to come across like I know it all. I'm Mr. Sports Guy. And I'm just Bob Brown, man. Likes to watch sports, talk about it, and hang out. And... Have a good time, you know, drink a few beers, relax, enjoy. Don't put a lot of stress and strain on myself. I'm going to try not to my wife and our lifestyle. And, you know, just have a good time and have fun, man. Because, I mean, it's sports. I, I, I watch the news. I see all these things. It's hardcore issues. But for me, it's, you know, wanting to have fun. As we say, you know, have fun, 
and get the job done. Yeah, that's what we do. And our final thought about Bob, he's an outstanding athlete. Pound for pound, maybe the best athlete of all the media guys. But Henry T., I'm 832 years old. I may have something to say about that. We may have to go out there and have the all-star contest between you and me. What do you think? I don't know about that. I, all I know is that when the show's over, you said you're going to go run, what, six, eight miles? I'm up to six mailboxes. Oh, six mail. Okay, I got you. Now, <laughs> now I got it. Now I understand. I think I could ride a wheelie six mailboxes. <laughs> I do. Bob, what a pleasure <laughs> having you on the show today. Continued success. Thank you, Henry. You know, Thank we you. work at the same place. We yeah. do the same thing. And uh, I really enjoy your show as a just a patron of the Bob Brown Show. But uh, more than that, I can say Bob Brown is my friend. And what a pleasure that is. No, thank, thank you, Henry. I'll say the exact same thing. You know you know how it is. There's a lot of people behind the scenes that make it all happen. Amen. So uh, uh, we just continue to do what we do and have a lot of fun with it. What time's your show? 4 o'clock, Monday through Friday, ESPN Radio. Yep. And what number do they call? 901-994-1017. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Listen to his show. He's super. Again, thank you. Thank you, Henry. Bob Brown. ESPN Radio 1017, the team. Wow. Listen today, okay? Do that for Henry T., and you'll be hooked on that show. Well, when we come back, we're going to meet one of the most outstanding high school football players in the state of New Mexico. Great personality, humble, and wow, can he run with the football. Stay right there. This is KZQ TV 32. I'm Henry T. Let's be inspired with Henry T. when we come back again. Funding for today's programming has been provided in part by A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. Hi, my name is Aaron, and I am the owner of A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. I am an avid listener of Channel 32, and this is our brand, A&D Signature Series. A&D also provides repairs, new installations, evaporative to refrigerated conversions, and other services. A&D Heating and Air Conditioning, 505-489-9342. Thanks for supporting family programming. your team. Who are the Escalante Lobos? Escalante Lobos, uh, we're a team from up north, you know, a little small uh, school. This community has fallen in love with your football team. Can you feel it? Yes, sir. I mean, look at the field we got. It's because of our fans right there. Wow. You know, when you think of the hard work that Coach Giles and the coaching staff put you through, is it still fun, despite you have to work so hard? Yeah, it doesn't really feel like working, it's just like fun, you know what I mean? <clears throat> like, they do their job, we do ours, it works out perfectly when we both put in the same amount of effort. Amen. Wow. What's the potential of this team? Potential? We're going to go to state, we're going to win it. really believe this team has what it takes? We got it. When you have teammates that trust each other, to you, what is the trust factor? On the team, like, we're basically a big family. That's what we are on the team. So, of course, there's a lot of trust in the family. That's how we win games right there. What does it feel like to you to play on a red field? It's amazing. Like, it's like an unbelievable experience. Wow. There aren't too many red fields in the country. I think there's only one. Literally? I think so. Wow. How special is that? It's amazing right there. It's crazy. Hey, congratulations to you. <clears throat> Thank you. And doing your part for this great team. And I hope you get to that championship game because Henry T is going to be there to broadcast it. Is that a deal? Yes, sir. As a football player, when number three, your quarterback, calls his number, how exciting a football player is Dominic? Outstanding. He's a great football player. 
He has a lot of potential. Wow. You ever thrown a block for Dominic to get him on one of those long touchdown runs? Yeah. Does he come off your block? Yes, sir. What does that feel like to you? It's amazing because, like, you know that you helped out in that one moment. It's like just like a great combination, good block, great run. It's the best feeling ever. And when the referee raises his hands and you threw the block to get him loose, does it feel like you just scored the touchdown as well? Kind of. It's like an adrenaline rush, like right there. Like you just scored. It's like, hey, man, yeah. Yeah. You're a good student. You're a great student. You're a young man of great character. Why is that important to you, Chris? Because you have to lead on the field and off. And besides, you have to keep your grades up to be able to go on the field. And when you do both, it's just awesome because you're doing good in school. You're doing great on the football field. It's just a good feeling. How will this experience help you the rest of your life? Good, because it teaches you how to stay on task, keep up with your grades, and then work hard on the field, too. As just a friend, who is Dominic Montano? Dominic, he's a good person in general. Like, he's one of the best friends I've ever had. Like, he's, he always has your back. What kind of teammate is Dominic Montano? He's a leader. Like, he's a good leader. Is he a good example for the underclassmen on this, on this campus? He's a great example. Like, he has good grades. He obviously does good on the football field. You're a leader. I would say you're a natural leader. Your guys like to follow your lead. Is leadership important to you when you put that uniform on? Yeah, I think leadership is very important um, to me and to this team, and especially if you want to win games. I think uh, leadership is a big role uh, that, that, you, that you need to, to win games and just to have fun and just let everyone know. It's just a game, but you still, you still want to go out there and compete and be the best. You're the quarterback. You've got your hands on that football every play. I mean, that's a demanding responsibility. How responsible do you have to be to play that position? Well, you gotta, you gotta be pretty responsible, you know. Like you said, you get the ball every play. You gotta know what's going on with the defenses. And uh, it's just, I take great pride in that, you know. It's a great feeling just to be one of the leaders of the team and uh, just to take that responsibility. As a quarterback, you have to see the big picture. You have to have conceptual skill. You got to see it here. You got to see it all around you. You have keys. What are the linebackers doing? What's their defense alignment? You've got to be a heady football player. It's a thinking man's position. It's a, it's a thinking man's game. What am I trying to say? Uh, you just basically, you just you have to think a lot. You gotta be prepared for what the defense is giving you, and uh, just go off of that, pretty much, and just just be a great leader on the field, and just uh, work hard and play hard. Excitement! Yeah. There are so many exciting things that happen on a football field, both sides of the ball, offensively, defensively. Give me an example of excitement to you recently in a game for you and your teammates. Spell out excitement on a play that you guys executed extremely well. Uh, well, this upcoming, this, uh, I mean, this past week, uh, we had ran a play off a shotgun, and uh, it was a speed option to the right. We cut it up the middle, and then cut it left, and then tried to go in for the touchdown. Just Well, every play pretty much is exciting on defense, on both sides of the ball. Just, uh, you know, getting tackles and uh, you're running for extra yards. It's just every part of this game is exciting. You've been blessed to run 16 times into the end zone. Wow. And throw several touchdown passes. A touchdown run of 90 yards, of which you know about. What do you think about out there when you're running 90 yards for a score? Well, you pretty much, well, you really don't think in that situation. You just, try and get to, to the end zone. You just try and try your best just to uh, make moves and uh, just uh, do your best for the team. When you run to daylight and you know you have daylight, now they're chasing you 
Now you gotta accelerate into that other gear so you don't get caught. How do you do that? I just try my best not to get caught. <laughs> just run, run my fastest to that end zone. And... You've had a great foundation, mom and dad, great parents around you. What kind of grade would you give the parenting that goes on in your home? Definitely an A-plus for both. You know, uh, they're a huge factor in my life, obviously, and uh, I love them too, to death. And they're just they've always been there for me, no matter what, and they're the best. You brought up the word. How much do you love your parents? I love them a lot. I can't even describe how much I love them. They great. do a lot for you. Do yeah, they do so much for me. I really Where do you get them. those clean jeans, those iron shirts? <laughs> and all that food. Who does that for you? That's all them. That's all of my parents. Academics are strong to you. Not only do you perform on the field, you're a performer in the classroom. What Sorry. kind of challenge is that? Uh, well, it's a, it's a challenge, obviously, because, you know, you have sports to think about and everything else, but uh, academics is a huge role. I like to stay on top of it um, as much as I can just so that I could play and get into to college for my for the future and it's just a it means a lot to me you plan on going to college as a student athlete yes sir you know you can play at the next level I know I can yeah what makes you believe that well just hard work and uh, dedication that I've done like all through my high school career and I really believe if I can just keep working hard I can make it so there's a college recruiter out there that's watched you play. Why should they take a chance on number three? Well, because I love, I love the game. Um, I'm a hard worker. Uh, I show great dedication and uh, I have good leadership and I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to play college football. Uh, I don't know, we're just a team that just likes to put in hard work and just love the game for football, and uh, we're willing to do whatever it takes to win another state championship. Tell me about your coaching staff, from the head coach down. Uh, well, the Capsulize head, them. The head coach, Coach Giles, is great. He's probably one of the best coaches I've ever had, and uh, he's just always he's always on us. Uh, he's always working hard on the weekends every week. He's a uh, hey man, uh, the assistant coaches. Uh, they work hard to get the game plan going, as you can see in the back already. This is the game plan and uh, for, for the upcoming week. Fantastic. You see the hard work those coaches put forth, and it works. Yes, sir. So they do their job, you do your job, pretty good combination. Yes, sir, yeah. And with that, I take you to the last question. What are the possibilities, and is there potential for your team to reach the state championship game? Yeah, I believe uh, we can make it to the state championship game uh, this year, uh, as long as we keep working hard and uh, work on our mistakes and uh, just getting in the weight room and just keep pushing forward. Amen. I love your community. I look outside the store and I see those beautiful mountains, the Brazos, yeah. all around here, the meadows, greenery. Wow. You live, you literally live in God's country. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I always talk about this to my friends and uh, just tell them, like, uh, we're so lucky to be in, like, this kind of community and this type of environment because it's just so beautiful. The scenery is, is outstanding. and. It's just, it's just a beautiful place to live in. Let's close with a little bit of fun. I've never seen a red football field before. <laughs> I just saw one for the first time. What's it like for you and your Lobo teammates to play on that red field? Well, it's just a great feeling. The field is beautiful. It's nice. The turf is perfect. Uh, it's, just, it's just one of the, it's just a great feeling. I love that field. Well, thank you for the interview. Thank you. And I really appreciate who you are as the total person, Dominic. Great young man, focused on the priorities of academics, being a good person of character. 
playing football as hard as you can and being a great son to your parents. Wow, what a combination. Congratulations on all of that. Thank you, sir. Hey, you know, one last question. Your faith has got to be strong. God is in your home. You believe. If it's not too private, what do you pray for, Dominic? Well, I pray for every night I pray before I go to sleep, and I just pray for my family and, uh, and my friends just to, just to have a good life and just to be humble and just to be very, I don't know, to be very wow. good citizens. Way to go. Thank you. Thank you. You have been watching another exciting episode of Be Inspired with Henry T. If you would like to support this program, please contact Henry at 505-907-4523 or email him at originalgameface at gmail.com. Watch Be Inspired with Henry T. Tuesdays at 8.30 a.m. and again at 9 p.m. on KZQ TV 32. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Marty Sice, a local State Farm Insurance agent. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. <coughs> We're never having kids. <laughs> I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We are never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. Marty Sice, 345-3431. Thank you for supporting family programming.